My name is uh, Luis Colina. I have prepared this talk uh, together with uh, Santiago Arribas. Both of us are here at the Center of, for Astrobiology in Madrid. Uh, Santiago is a member of the ESA science team for NISPEC, and I myself a member of the uh, European uh, MIDI uh, team. Um, we already heard from Nora and uh, Alvaro, very interesting and, and uh, nice presentations on the on the instruments and their characteristics. And the idea of this talk is to just give you uh, a more uh, the perspective from the, the observers. And uh, for that, I have divided the, the talk in, in two blocks. The first one is just <coughs> uh, showing and explaining a, a little bit in, in detail the science capabilities of the, these two instruments on the integral field spectroscopy. That will be in the context of uh, the extragalactic science because I'm working on galaxies, but I guess uh, some or many of the things that I'm going to say will also apply to other areas. And then I will go into a second block that is, uh, I guess, more practical uh, for maybe all of us uh, when trying to uh, convert your science ideas into a, a real proposal. And there I will talk about the, some common uh, characteristics of the instruments as well as differences and how they translate into things like uh, you know target acquisition, spectral coverage, and sampling background, and all these uh, kind of things that uh, we really need to to take care of when really preparing and doing the uh, observation. Okay, in terms of science capabilities, uh, as uh, uh, Alvaro said, I guess this uh, sentence is correct that the NISPEC and MIRI combined will be the first integral field spectrographs in space at the near infrared and mid infrared wavelengths and this is i guess correct now so we all agree on that okay good so uh, okay in a six meter telescope right then combined with the james Webb, that will provide us with uh, you know uh, a kind of a really huge uh, discovery potential because we will be having not only the 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 the, the large increase in sensitivity but also the increase in angular resolution. Basically, all of the, all of, uh, the spectrographs will be at the super second uh, level, a wide range of uh, spectral coverage, and all of that with a very stable uh, and uh, well-behaved uh, PSF, and also with a, a relatively high uh, spectral resolutions, at least in the mid-infrared uh, range that will be factors uh, five, six higher than the, the ones on, on Spitzer. So um, let's try to translate all these capabilities into uh, you know, uh, physical units in, in general. Talking about the uh, coverage and, and the angular resolution, as, as mentioned in the previous uh, transparencies. OK, so the field of view of NISPEC is bo both fields of view are kind of small. NISPEC has a, a three by three, I don't know, I guess I'm sitting here better. Uh, three by three uh, arc second square, and MIRI goes from four, four by four up to eight by eight at the, the longest uh, wavelengths. And the sampling is very fine, a tenth of arc second for NISPEC, and two tenths up to six tenths uh, for uh, MIRI. This translates, if we take uh, nearby galaxies, uh, what that really means is that the, the field of view of a single pointing uh, will give you an, uh, a physical size of uh, one or two kiloparsecs with a sampling of about uh, 100 parsecs, so typical size of uh, yeah, yeah, molecular uh, clouds. So this configuration, I would say not ideal, I would say less ideal for large mosaics. mosaics. So if you really want to plan a kind of a very large uh, diffuse object. There's going to be a lot of uh, pointings uh, and therefore a lot of overheads on, on that. But it's certainly doable. But uh, the good thing about the nearby universe is to look into very detail at the, at the small scales. However, if you, if you go to the high redshift uh, universe, and by high redshift here it can be anything from 0.1 or 0.2 all the way to redshift or 9 or 10, if we hopefully detect those uh, sources, uh, the field of view there will be covering uh, several kiloparsecs, so 5 to 15, 20 kiloparsecs. And the mapping there will be on the scales of uh, kiloparsecs. So essentially, for all these galaxies, uh, the single galaxy will be very well uh, on your field of view with just one pointing. Could be extended in some cases, and in other cases, as already mentioned, would be uh, likely point sources. But uh, basically, 
on your field of view. So uh, field of view of, of the spectrographs, uh, nice if you want to study uh, small scale structures in the nearby universe, very nice if you want to point and have uh, kiloparsec uh, studies on the high redshift uh, galaxies. Uh, in terms of spectral coverage, already said, uh, we are free from the atmosphere, so we don't have to take, uh, we are free from the thermal uh, emission from the atmosphere, as well as, as the emission, uh, line emission and absorptions. So we will have for the first time a continuous coverage of the, the range from the 0.6 uh, microns all the way to 28 and, and up uh, microns. And this will be essentially covered by NISPEC all the way to 5.2 microns and then starting from about 4.9 with some overlap with uh, NISPEC by MIDI all the way to 28.8 uh, microns. And this is, I guess, a huge uh, advantage because uh, near-infrared and mid are, are, are full of uh, diagnostic uh, lines, so essentially. If you take the, the near-infrared, so there are plenty of lines that are tracing all the phases of the interstellar medium from coronal lines that uh, trace AGNs or high energetic uh, uh, phenomena in, in galaxies, in our galaxy, to uh, ionize interstellar medium, passion, bracket, Balmer lines that uh, will be there just giving the overall ionization budget on, on your objects, uh, molecular lines that will trace the hot molecular phase, shock uh, emission through the iron lines, uh, star formation, pH at the 3.3, and of course, uh, stellar continuum with all the stellar features in the, in the near infrared. Uh, important aspect here on the near infrared with uh, NISPEC is, of course, the pH 3.3 and all the bracket uh, lines that are going to be basically uh, new for all these kind of studies because uh, essentially was uh, ACARI as shown here in this uh, transparency, the only instrument so far able to get kind of a, a relatively uh, nice spectroscopy. Uh, in terms of uh, mid-IR, exactly the same full of uh, different species, uh, atomic line, sorry, oh, <coughs> atomic lines um, of different species, uh, elements, uh, different uh, ionization potentials, as well as all the rest of the pH uh, features. Uh, Carl uh, is, is uh, <laughs> happy about that. Uh, and as well as many of the molecular lines in the meta, meta IR range. So they will be a full of uh, uh, lines and di diagnostics to do all the physics that you really want to do on, on these objects. And it's not only that you have all these uh, uh, lines available uh, to you basically in a continuous way, but this is of course the sensitivity of the, the instrument that is really uh, amazing. Just to, as already mentioned, no, is, is this, uh, this new instrument is going to be at least uh, 100 times more sensitive than any other previous instrument at those wavelengths. And this is really uh, something uh, 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 extremely, um, uh, you know, with extreme potential. Just to give you some numbers, I'm not going through all these numbers, but uh, you can get uh, NISPEC, uh, you know, uh, sensitivities at the distance sigma 10 uh, k seconds of, of the order of a few times 10 to the minus uh, 19 up to 5 to uh, 10 to minus 18 and for MIDI is basically because the different detectors uh, technology and so on is a factor 10 less in sensitivity however these values here 10 to minus 19 10 to minus 18 10 to minus uh, 17 uh, if you compare with the typical emission lines in that you have on your nearby galaxies are you know, factors of a thousand, ten thousand uh, brighter than the, the uh, sorry, fainter than the, the, the bright uh, emission lines that you could get in those uh, objects. Uh, so examples here is like uh, ARP 220 or the antenna with some of the spectra from Spitzer. So that essentially, bottom line is that if you take, you, you know, a kind of a 15 minutes uh, exposure integration with a resolution of uh, 3000, so the best resolution you could get with these two spectrographs, you could get a already very high signal to noise on your emission lines, both for uh, NISPEC and uh, MIDI uh, as well. Of course, there is always a whole range of uh, you know, emission lines and so on, and then again, 
if you really want to check for your specific target, go and do <laughs> your detailed uh, modeling with the ETC. But the bottom line, few minutes will make uh, amazing uh, maps on many uh, tracers and nearby uh, galaxies. Uh, if you go to the, uh, the other stream, the very faint uh, cosmological uh, uh, sources, again, here, MIRI, it will be ideal to study the dusty and massive star-forming galaxies. There, the rest frame near infrared uh, lines will be on the mid-IR range for NISPEC, a redshift between two and five, and uh, typical times of one to a few hours would pro uh, would, uh, will provide uh, uh, detections on passion alpha and some other lines uh, with signal to noise uh, well above uh, 10. Uh, the same is true for NISPEC. Uh, again, here at NISPEC, uh, all the optical lines will be shifting into the uh, near infrared uh, range of, 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 of NISPEC. And again, for typical star forming galaxies, uh, Lyman Alpha galaxies, and so on, emitters, all kinds of galaxies at those ranges of uh, three to six, you will also get very nice uh, maps with a high signal to noise on times scales of a few hours. Okay? So the capabilities are uh, enormous and the discovery uh, potential of the, the two IFUs combines is, is amazing. Um, okay, now go to the uh, practical uh, things. And we have to remember that uh, when we uh, plan an observation with uh, James Webb, this is going to be uh, event driven. And every time you do uh, an observation, a visit, you're going to start with a part that is uh, the slew moving from a previous uh, target to your target, and then a part that is just acquiring your target, uh, moving and setting your instrument, and then starting your exposure. So this is the, you know, the general uh, 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 process of a typical uh, uh, visit or a typical observation. So the thing is that since this uh, James Webb is so powerful and sensitive, the exposure times are going to be uh, short, uh, minutes to a few hours. And therefore, uh, these overheads that are associated with the maneuvering and the mechanisms on could be significant, at least for uh, many of uh, galactic studies and nearby universe. Maybe not that significant uh, in the context of uh, cosmological sources, but certainly for a nearby universe would be significant. And then. Of course, uh, I guess we have to make an effort uh, when preparing our observations to make the most out of the, the time. So really the efficiency of the proposal should be up. And then we have to uh, really look in detail uh, in practical terms to things like uh, how to do the target decision, uh, what is the spectral coverage that I really need for my science, <coughs> how to do the dithering and spatial sampling, whether I'm, I'm worried about the PSF or not, and whether I already mentioned, worry about the background. Some of this depends on the, on the instrument, as, as we will see. Um, go for a pointing and target decision. I guess this uh, uh, plot has already been shown uh, several times during the week. Uh, just to let you know that uh, this uh, little dot here is the NISPEC IFU, and just quite on the opposite side of the, of the uh, sorry, again with this. Uh, focal plane, we have the MIDI IFU. They are separated by about 13.5 uh, arc minutes, which means that essentially that the, you cannot use the same guy to start to do the, your, your observations if, if you really want to do kind of a coordinated or com combined observation. The other relevant aspect in terms of or, uh, target acquisition orientation so is that the relative orientation of the two IFUs are different. So if you really care about the uh, the structure of your source and so on, and then you really need to do a different, you know, the same orientation, so it cannot be done, uh, I understand, uh, within the same, you know, uh, day. So uh, what this implies in terms of uh, uh, overheads is that there are essentially two strategies to do the, the, the oh my gosh, I'm having problems with this. Uh, Two strategies to get the target acquisition. One is the point and shoot strategy that uh, was already mentioned. Uh, the typical accuracy, I understand that this is about 0 0.3, 0 0.4 arc seconds right now uh, with the current uh, uh, astrometry database. Um, but probably 
if you have a, a, a target that is uh, kind of extended and have a structure, you really want to have uh, a better uh, accuracy on your uh, final position. So you, there, you therefore would like to have a target acquisition. Just to have you an idea of the amount of time that will go into that, if you consider a kind of a coordinate proposal that you, you really want to do the NISPEC and MIRI science, that would imply a slew and two guide star and target acquisitions. And roughly the total, the total time for this would be uh, 1.2 hours. So if you compare relative, inter relative terms with your a few minutes uh, exposures on uh, nearby uh, galaxies, this is uh, a lot of time. Uh, good news uh, is that maybe, as I understood as, as yesterday or the day uh, uh, before, that instead of just using the actual astrometric database, uh, Gaia could be used, the astrometry of Gaia. That would be much better, going down to 0.1 arc second. And maybe, maybe uh, using the, the Gaia uh, astrometry, all the IFU uh, pointings could be done in a point and shoot a strategy. And if, it is, if this is so, we would be saving uh, this total amount of time, for instance, in this case, so 20 minutes. So that would be a, a big saving, and you know, I would be in favor of <laughs> just getting all this astrometry and, and put into the system as soon as possible, uh, certainly. Uh, the other thing that you have to be uh, aware of, that if you want to do uh, your combined NISPEC and MIRI uh, a spectroscopy, but for some reason you really need to have the same orientation and therefore plan for a, another, another visit, then that would represent two slews, of course, and then uh, the total time will be increased from here to an additional 32 minutes for, for the uh, slew. So really think about the orientation of the, of the two eye of use and how to do uh, your program if you, if you plan to do a coordinated uh, program in terms of uh, pointing and acquisition is kind of uh, expensive and difficult to get down uh, to less than one hour. Okay, spectral coverage is also very important, very different from the two instruments. Um, NISPEC, of course, has uh, full coverage from 0.7 to 5 uh, microns, and essentially it comes in two flavors. Uh, basically, is the low resolution, the resolution uh, 100 that goes in just one shot from uh, 0.6 all the way to 5.3. That would be uh, very nice. But then if you plan to do, to do your uh, intermediate resolution, either at a level of 1,000 or 2,700, so you really need to have four uh, settings, so consecutive uh, settings. For MIDI, this is, uh, as uh, uh, just explained by Alvaro, uh, to cover the entire uh, spectral range of MIRI, you would need three settings that are not contiguous. So even if you are interested in just the, uh, the shortest uh, wavelength, you will also get all these uh, uh, extra ranges. So even if you are interested in one line at uh, a given uh, range, look for additional lines at other ranges in order to, you know, make the most uh, out of uh, your science. Um, okay, regarding the, res the resolution, uh, one therefore needs to think very carefully about the, the location of the high priority lines or features and uh, how to select the specific settings. Because of course one can get the, uh, the full range from uh, the optical all the way to 28.8 uh, microns at a very nice uh, uh, spectral resolution, but requires seven spectral settings. And when it comes to overheads, uh, then you have to pay for those. Uh, MIDI uh, requires about one minute per setting, while NISPEC requires uh, about two minutes per setting. So again, if you want to do the full range, there will be an additional overhead of 30 minutes. That again, for you know, galactic or nearby galaxies will be a not negligible fraction of the, of the total time, okay? The other thing I guess is, uh, you know, interested, uh, interesting to keep in mind is that there is no option uh, on the IFS to get a low uh, spectral resolution over the entire range. So you can get the uh, the, the, uh, the R100 mode on NISPEC from 0.6 to 3.5.3, uh, and then for MIDI, 
you could get a similar resolution of 100, but using the LRS, and that's, that will go that uh, goes only to uh, about uh, 12 microns, as was uh, just explained by by Sara. And this is only low slit mode. So if you really want to have a kind of a you know uh, map, you would need to do the the usual uh, scanning that uh, we were familiar uh, with uh, Spitzer, for instance. Okay, dithering and, uh, and, and nodding uh, strategies. Well, of course, there are many reasons to do the dithering. So there has to be, you know, it's hard to believe that uh, someone is going to do a, an observing strategy without dithering. So it has, you know, yeah, there are many reasons uh, for which you, will re you really require the, the dithering. Of course, the one, uh, one of uh, the first uh, that come to mind is the, the PSF sampling. You really want to have your data with the, the best uh, angular resolution. The other is uh, everything related to uh, detectors, cosmetic uh, defects, and uh, character characteristics in general. Minimize all these uh, uh, defects. Uh, third one, of course, very important and, and mentioned here is the background uh, measurements. And it can be uh, additional reasons like trying to, since the, the field, of, uh, field of view are kind of small, trying to somehow enlarge your field of view. Of course, at the, at the pain uh, for a signal to noise, that would be uh, lower in, in the, the, um, the, the, the whole area. OK, so let's uh, talk a little bit about these uh, different effects and how they, they, they change from uh, uh, one instrument to the, to the other. Uh, PSF uh, sampling and, and dithering. Uh, both instruments are, I guess, uh, mostly somehow undersampled. Uh, NISPEC is, is fully undersampled uh, over the entire spectral uh, range, as uh, shown here in this uh, graph, where it's uh, full width half max in the number of pixels. So it goes from 0.5 up to about uh, 1.6. So it's not a fully Nyquist uh, uh, sample. And then uh, for MIDI, the different channels, uh, one being the bluest and, and for the, the reddest of all channels, uh, you, you have uh, good sampling along the slides uh, for channels 2, 3, and 4. But uh, still, uh, you are just about to, to be sampled at the channels 3 and 4 across the slides and, uh, and, and, and somehow with a, a lower quality in terms of sampling for channels 1 and 2. So essentially, if, if you really want to get uh, you know, your PSF well sample, you really need to do the, uh, the dithering for, all, uh, for the two instruments. Uh, what happens with the background? Well, uh, Maka gave a, a nice uh, uh, talk on, on Monday. So I would uh, uh, ask you to just go to Maka's uh, presentation for all the details. Uh, essentially, of course, uh, moving from HST, that is very familiar for most of us to James Webb uh, reduces the background uh, dramatically, of course. But since we have uh, this uh, wonderful instrument so sensitive, we uh, still uh, have uh, additional sources of background that uh, really uh, are there and then they have to be uh, taken into consideration. Uh, the usual ones are the sky, the zodiacal, and, and galactic that would affect the, the two instruments. Uh, the telescope, in general, the thermal uh, um, emission from the, the, the different uh, components of the telescope will affect uh, MIRI uh, dramatically. And then we have an instrument-specific uh, background, also mentioned by, by Nora on, on his presentation, uh, NISPEC-specific uh, due to the MSA uh, imprint on the, on the IFU. Um, so a sky uh, for, for MIDI, uh, this uh, zodiacal light is the one that really dominates the MIDI background at wavelengths uh, shorter than uh, 12 microns. And this is the, the main say, source of uh, background for, for MIDI. and has to always to be a, a taker of. Uh, for NISPEC, uh, the importance of this background depends very much on the, on the science case. And uh, the things that you uh, really need to consider is uh, resolution. If you have a kind of a high resolution, 1,000 and uh, 3,000, uh, in general, you are going to be in a situation that is dominated by the detector noise. But if you go and try to use the R100, 
uh, resolution and in particular are interested in wavelengths uh, shorter than two microns because the sun scatter light uh, that could be an, a very important uh, effect. Uh, regarding whether you are interested in emission lines or continuums, certainly if you're interested in emission lines is uh, less relevant, but if you are interested in continuum and having a very nice shape on, on your continuum, certainly this is uh, a very important effect also uh, uh, for NISPEC. And of course, uh, the other aspect that are really important is the size of the target. Uh, uh, with regard to how to do the, the mitigation of that, so in terms of just uh, you know the, the size of your dithering or nodding uh, for your observations, that will come later, as well as, uh, as the MSA imprint. Okay, uh, telescope background. Uh, I would say this is more specific uh, to to MIRI. Uh, uh, it's going to be stable during the typical uh, exposure times or typical times of uh, of a visit. So uh, we. Uh, can rely on that. It's important at the wavelengths uh, longer than uh, 10 microns and is the dominant component at wavelengths uh, beyond uh, 15 microns. So this is uh, really, as you can see here in the plot, uh, really a drastic change in, in, the, uh, in the increase of the, of the background. Uh, the strategy, as mentioned by, by, by Maka uh, Monday, and I already mentioned here a few minutes ago, uh, depends very much on the on the on the size of the of the source. Uh, if you have a a, a source that is uh, really small, I would say maybe one arc second across uh, over the field of view, you could just move your source uh, on target, just doing the the nodding or the dithering within the field of view in order to get this uh, uh, additional uh, information on the background. But if the size of the source is of course much larger than Uh, than the field of view or about the same size, uh, certainly you really need to go off source to get uh, at least one measurement of, uh, of your background. And assuming that it's gonna be a stable, that would be uh, the minimum uh, uh, quantity in terms of uh, off source uh, uh, pointing. <laughs> Instrument specific is, the, as I said, uh, NISPEC uh, specific. Uh, Nora uh, presented in detail on, on her presentation. Uh, it's due to the, the fact that the, the IFU shares the same detector as, as the multi-object spectrograph, and therefore they have uh, leakings and they fail open shutters. And uh, then, they, of course, there are many, as mentioned already, many sources there that could affect, that could increase the background. The, the diffuse zodiac zodiacal and galactic light, celestial sources that uh, happen to land, you know, in in uh, one of these open micro shutters. But uh, certainly uh, another important uh, aspect to consider is uh, your own target. I was already mentioned here that if extended by more than uh, 10 arc seconds, that is the the, the distance between the IFU and NISPEC IFU and the the edge of the M uh, MSAs. Uh, We'll have, we could, uh, could also have a uh, potential impact on the, on, the, on the background. Okay, so you really have to, uh, to consider all these sources. Uh, again, the strategy uh, mentioned by Nora and, and others depends very much on the science case. It's been uh, investigated and been studied, but certainly uh, the, you know, the obvious thing is to, to use a dedicated exposure with the, the close IFUs and do the leader pattern. Uh, uh, and the same way as, as, you, as you did uh, on your observations. Uh, other options are, I guess, considered within the NISPEC team is to model the background and try to do an hybrid of just a single exposure and uh, you know, the, try to correct the background, uh, the model with uh, your observation. Uh, all in all, uh, these effects of the MSA imprint are more relevant if interested in continuum and if interested uh, in our 100 uh, resolution are less relevant if you are interested only in uh, mission lines and at the, the higher uh, spectral resolution. So it's something that you have to consider very careful uh, in order to do the, the trade-off between the amount of time required and the accuracy of, of your uh, measurements. Okay, so finally, to combine, the, of course, the, these uh, effects, background and PSF and other effects, 
Uh, the two instruments have uh, dithering and nodding uh, strategies uh, for PSF, uh, you know, uh, sampling and cosmetic, as well as for background measurements. Uh, NISPEC has, as, as uh, you know, just mentioned by, by Nora, some predefined their patterns. Uh, I understand that the user uh, would be able to define uh, his own uh, patterns. From, uh, from those uh, basic uh, patterns that they, they have, in particular the 60 uh, points uh, dither. Uh, MIRI has uh, kind of uh, fixed patterns that are optimized, as mentioned by Alvaro, as a function of the spectral range, because uh, one of the things is the, the size of, that the, you move to do your dithering, that essentially are two and four uh, point uh, ditherings. And uh, regarding the background, as already mentioned, uh, really, if your target is extended, you know, uh, a few arc seconds, the best way is to just move away uh, from your source and get at least one uh, background uh, measurement. Keep in mind that doing all this dithering and all this nodding and so on uh, always involves these small angle maneuvers. And uh, right now, if I understood correctly, uh, if you do this small uh, maneuvering, a distance is uh, less than three arc seconds, uh, cost about uh, 25 seconds, but uh, if they are above the three arc seconds, probably this is, uh, you know, it's not uh, jumping from 25 to 65, but it's uh, kind of uh, uh, linear or non-linear maybe, uh, will go up to 65 seconds. Uh, so again, galactic sources nearby uh, galaxies where you have kind of a short exposures, all these dithering's that are really we understand uh, needed to get uh, you know a good uh, sampling on your PSF, a good uh, measurement of your backgrounds and cosmetics uh, will cost uh, you know a reasonable fraction of, of time and therefore you really need to to think very careful about the how to do your dithers and the size of your dithers and all these kind of uh, things. Okay, so uh, last is the summary. As, as mentioned, I mean this uh, James Webb combined with NISPEC and, and MIDI uh, you know, will be a uh, extremely powerful uh, tool, will open, really open a, a qualitative new window to the studies of extended uh, uh, sources in general, of course, uh, because this uh, unique uh, combination of, of features, uh, so the increased sensitivity, the wide spectral range, the stable uh, super second angular resolution, and the possibility of doing this intermediate relative similar uh, spectral resolution all over the, the spectral uh, range. So typical on target at, at times uh, could be short, minutes to a few hours, even for, for faint uh, cosmological sources. So overhead time is not uh, negligible. And I guess we have to make an effort to think very careful about how to implement our science ideas into a very efficient uh, proposal. Uh, the more efficient, uh, the, the, more efficient, uh, the more efficient our proposal individual programs uh, are, the more, of course, uh, efficient the, the James Webb uh, will be for all of us and uh, will increase the, the science productivity of the, of the whole facility. Thank you very much.